Paul Lindman, the early morning update in Portland. Good morning to you. I uh, was a little bit surprised that there wasn't greater reaction to a report out of Oregon State University concerning what we now know from last year's uh, Japan earthquake and tsunami as it pertains to our preparation for the long-awaited big one. Let's talk to the expert behind that report. He's Scott Ashford, Professor Interim Dean of Col the College of Engineering at Oregon State, one of the international experts that went to Japan last year to look at the affected area. He joins us this morning on the Morning Update. Uh, Professor, good to talk to you. Um, were you surprised there wasn't greater reaction? I mean, we got a ton of work to do, and we don't have the money to pay for it here. Yeah, you know, I got to say that the Japan earthquake uh, actually got us going, and so uh, the Senate, the House House uh, Resolution Number Three last year, uh, set Oregon on a path for this over this next year to essentially assess the state of where we are today and what to expect when the big one comes along the Cascadia. You are most concerned, as I understand it, about what, what you call liquefaction. That's the shaking of the ground that turns the soil into mush. What would that do to Oregon when the big one comes along? What does it mean to our structures, our infrastructure? Yeah, so the thing that I'm focused on uh, are the performance of lifeline facilities, like our bridges, uh, like our water pipelines, our electrical pipelines, fuel lines. And liquefaction turns the ground essentially into a, into a fluid, and it loses its ability to support bridges, support these, uh, these lifeline facilities. So after a 9.0 on the Cascadia, our mobility is impacted because we can't, uh, the bridges will have collapsed or become unusable. Many of our water lines, electrical lines, and fuel lines also become unusable, and that's something that, you know, those are things that everybody depends on every day. And, and this meant thousands of more deaths in Japan after the disaster because uh, rescuers couldn't get to these folks, right? Well, that's right. And if you look at, you know, if you look at the, uh, you know, the biggest death threat is along the Oregon coast, you know, because due to the due to potential tsunami. And currently, ODOT believes that every single one of the routes over to the coast would be shut down from bridge failure in the result of a Cascadia earthquake. Oregon State, I know, is working closely with ODOT on, on correcting or, or making ready some of these things. Specifically, what are you doing? What are they doing? Well, you know, there's not a lot of money right now. And so what ODOT is focusing on is identifying key what we call lifeline routes to the coast so that what limited resources that the state has, they can put into one or two routes over to the coast so that we can uh, use that to get over to the coast to provide rescue and relief efforts to the people living along the shore of Oregon. Scott, is this going to impact future construction here? Are we going to build buildings that are better able to withstand this stuff in the future as a result? We are already building buildings and bridges that can withstand this type of shaking and the liquefaction. The problem we have in Oregon is that we have a lot of legacy buildings, legacy infrastructure that was built back in the 50s and 60s uh, before we really knew that the Cascadia earthquake was, was uh, a possibility off the Oregon coast. The 1,100 or so bridges we have in our state, haven't we retrofitted many of them in preparation? No, of the 1,100 bridges, I believe we've retrofitted just over 100, so we have nearly 1,000 to go. Uh, I saw a presentation by ODOT the other day, and I think at the rate we're going, we have about another 150 years to finish that effort. Big picture, and I know it's it's probably not too fair to ask for, uh, an expert such as yourself to speak in very general terms, but uh, how would you describe your level of concern over all of this as we look to what might be coming? I think it's not the, – the concern is not urgent. What it needs is, uh, I would say, a slow and steady approach. You know, this is the magnitude of our problem here, which I think could be devastating to the economy when the earthquake comes. Uh, I think it's something that we have to address probably over a 20- or 30-year time frame. It's not something we're going to get done uh, this year or next, but it's something that we have to start now. Professor Scott Ashford, he's acting in the College of Engineering at Oregon State University, speaking to us from Corvallis this morning. Thank you very, very much for being with us. You're welcome. Thank you.